All right, welcome back, everyone. April at Steve's is all about puppies, and I'm very excited to introduce our guest, the wonderful Dr. Christina Chambreau. Now, Dr. Chambreau is an internationally known homeopathic veterinarian, speaker, and author. She's taught thousands of pet parents and veterinarians over the past 40 years. Uh, she's currently on the faculty at the Holistic Actions for Companion Animals Academy and on the panel for the Smart Pet Talk series. Dr. Chambreau, welcome. Oh, I am so glad to be here. Since I go way back, of course, mm -hmm. I've known about Steve's Real Food for a long time since it started because I knew Steve way back at the beginning. <laughs> oh, that's so cool. Yeah, I'm such a big fan of Steve Brown's work um, as he was building Steve's Real Food. And he keeps doing more. Great books, great, mm, great knowledge. Oh, I mean, yeah. who knew taurine, lack of taurine could possibly trigger aggression in sensitive animals and lack of meat, lack of taurine. Right. So. Absolutely. No, he's just fascinating, a fascinating person. I've got one of his books here. This one's one of my favorites. See Spot yep. Live Longer. Classic. See Spot Live Longer. So, you know, it's like um, I wish that everybody who has a dog or a cat in their life would have real books. The internet is great. Right. But when you have a real book, you can like thumb through it and find things. And when, as you're reading, it like triggers other things in your mind and the yeah. internet does that, but in a different way. So I think you need both. I um, absolutely agree. I think books are very much more cohesive. You kind of get a better start to finish picture. You get some information that you may not have thought to search for. Um, that's right. And, and actually, that's, that's one of the reasons that uh, Jeff Feynman created Holistic Actions, because with a puppy or a kitten or any age animal, of course, when you come there, we've organized it into what can you do for a puppy? Mm -hmm. And so it goes through that. So we'll be talking about some of those things here, and I may talk yeah. about stuff that's not in theirs and vice versa. So it right. does sort of organize it the way a book would. But mm -hmm. books still give you all that extra, all that extra. <laughs> I absolutely agree. Yep, totally huge fan of classic books. Lots of print in my house. Which so I as we get puppy here, that would have been cute. Didn't think about that. <laughs> a stuffed animal puppy would have been right, perfect. something to kind of demonstrate a little bit. Sure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, as we get started, uh, I do want to mention for those of you watching that this discussion is pre-recorded so that we could fit it into our schedules. But um, we will at the end of this. Uh, share with you how you can learn more from Dr. Chambro and where you can follow her work and get access to some of these amazing resources she's going to talk about today. Um, now, I wanted to take a little non sequitur. When we were writing back and forth um, before this, you told me that your mission is to empower people to heal themselves and their animals in ways that heal the planet so that it yes. sings more joyously. Um, yes. I love that. Do you want to talk really quick about why that's so important to you? We're all interconnected. Absolutely everything is interconnected. Mm -hmm. And nowadays, science is proving that. Heart math has all of these studies that show how far out your influence goes, your energy goes. And so it impacts on other people. If we go back and look at indigenous mm -hmm. cultures, if they took a, if they randomly ripped a leaf off a tree, they would feel they were ripping their finger wow. or another person's finger. And so when they, cut down a tree, killed an animal, dug up the dirt, whatever, they would pray. And mm. to different degrees, depending on how routine it was, I guess. And they would ask permission and they would say, thank you. And when mm. I'm volunteering at the Environmental Learning Center's touch tank and the little kids are coming in to touch the sea stars and um, yeah. hermit crabs, I tell them, as you touch them, say, I love you. Thank you for letting me touch you because wow. there is this interaction. And what I realized is what I've been teaching for years before I came up with my mission uh, was the holistic approaches are healing the planet mm -hmm. as opposed to harming the planet. So right. let's just talk about food for a minute. And now, of course, with Steve's food, it sort of fits in the in-between part here. But if sure. you're buying kibbled food or if you're buying commercial food, kibble or canned, mm -hmm. the ingredients have to get shipped in from all over the world. Right. So as we found out in the knots, sometimes ingredients are coming that are killing animals and we don't mm -hmm. know it. And then we figure it out. And that keeps happening because you 
when you look at the ingredients, you have no idea where those ingredients came from. Absolutely. You have no right. idea. And so you don't know how they, Im how the collecting and raising of them impacted the environment. Yeah. And then the shipping impacts the environment. The building and the processing impacts the environment. Then mm. the back packaging is, and then is shipped to wholesalers who ship it to distributors. And then you go drive to the store to pick it up. Right. And so there's packaging that's getting thrown away. There's, um, there's, you know, there's even problems with when you buy a big bag to save money, how, mm -hmm. how much degradation is there going to be? Right. So, mm -hmm. yeah, you're going to say, okay, Steve's Real Food has a factory and Steve's Real Food is shipping it to people and mm -hmm. distributors. So there is that. However, with Steve's Real Food, you can find out where the ingredients come from. You can. Mm -hmm. we're, yep, we're raising our animals humanely. We're sourcing everything as close to the facility as we can to reduce that uh, footprint. Um, e sustainability is a huge thing for us. Our packaging is even produced by a um, company that is completely solar powered and that our packaging is fully recyclable. Um, so, yeah, this is something that you're speaking right to my heart. This is very important to us. So if you're buying Steve's Real Food, you're helping the, the planet. You're helping heal the planet. You're, you're and, pushing things in the right direction. And that's what we want right. to do. Is turn this from, from the few good businesses who are really working hard to make this happen to that just being the standard. Exactly. Oh, wouldn't that be great? Wow. Right. Yeah. I always that, say the only way standards will get better today is if or tomorrow is if we support those who are doing better today. You are so right. We actually vote with our dollars. What That's we, absolutely what, true. Yep. What we buy. So the very best, of course, would be if you lived on a farm and you mm -hmm. raised all the animals and vegetables for yourself and your animal companions and you knew exactly how it was raised, et cetera. The next best would be going to local farms mm -hmm. and buying it that way or farmer's markets and buying yep. the parts that other people weren't eating or hunters mm -hmm. that are hunting meat and don't want to eat the meat. They just like the hunt. And right. so you can pay a processor a small fee and get very inexpensive, healthy, wild game. Hmm. And so all of those are certainly a little better than commercial raw foods, but still, the other way that you're helping is when you are either making your own food or using a commercial raw food like Steve's, mm -hmm. you are improving your animal's health yeah. so much that you're going to have a much less likelihood of needing antibiotics and drugs that then mm -hmm. are, it's the whole thing again. Where did the ingredients right. come from? How did the shipping, how did the packaging, all of that? Plus, well, that's less drugs ending up in the water poop. supply as well. Yep. That's right. Goes out yeah. the poop and the pee. And, and harms harm and and cost you a lot more money. Right. There's that piece too. <laughs> okay. So we could talk forever about we've opened seven doors here, but uh let's well, get back to today's topic. Food. Food with puppies. Yeah. The first thing with that is I want to say you don't have to wait till they're an adult to switch to a fresh food diet. Mm -hmm. You can start as they're being weaned. That's the time to start. Well, Absolutely. you get a puppy after they've been weaned. Okay, that's the time to start. You're getting a rescue dog from a shelter. Okay, that's the time to start. Right. So you start them right off the bat. And mm -hmm. um, the key, so actually, here's the biggest thing for puppies and any other animals is mm -hmm. you need to educate yourself about why you're doing any choice. So what's the anatomy of a dog? They have ripping and tearing teeth, bone crunching teeth, little mm -hmm. gnawing teeth. They have a stomach designed to have bones and big stuff in it. Um, they have a short, small intestine. So the vegetables should be pureed if, you know, if we do vegetables. And the only mm -hmm. thing they have to have is calcium either in bones or as a supplement. The same thing goes to training. You have um, training and exercise. Mental and physical exercise is so important with puppies. Absolutely. You need to learn. Don't just go to one trainer and do what they say. It's mm -hmm. up to you. You're your pet's anim your advocate for your puppy. So learn. I've got a Frenchie, okay? Mm -hmm. If I have a Frenchie or any other peak, anybody with sort of a smushy face and maybe a big neck, right. 
what are the problems that can happen because of their anatomy in terms of how they're trained? Mm -hmm. I have a I have a dog that I thought needed a ton of exercise. I have an Aussie and I was planning on running marathons. And every time I run a lot, my dog gets sick. Hmm. The puppy just doesn't seem to want to do this. Hmm. Well, just because it's an Aussie doesn't mean it loves to run or a Saluki or a Whippet or a Greyhound or right, whatever. Yeah. DNA They're is all not individuals. Mm -hmm. And so being your puppy's advocate is really key. And mm. that means experimenting. That means realizing there's no one right answer. There's no one right food. There's no one right training. There's no one right mental activity. Mm -hmm. You want to do as many as you can. We have found over the years, and I've been doing this 40 years now. And right. before that, from age 11 to age 30, when I graduated from vet school, I was doing conventional. I was a vet tech and helped. Mm -hmm. So I've been doing this since age 11. 20 years of conventional and 40 years of holistic. So that that gives a nice, I get a nice comparison that way. And the yeah. biggest difference that I see is stopping, thinking before you make a decision, number mm -hmm. one. Number two, learn how to evaluate the response. So if you have tried a particular food, you've tried a particular exercise, you're starting trying some mental tricks, mm -hmm. um, then what changed? And so that was why when everybody begged me to write a book, I wrote the book, The Healthy Animals Journal. Hmm. And The Healthy Animals Journal is actually, I now have a dog and a cat one online, and it gives you pages, gives you a bunch of intro of stuff we're talking about. But yeah. then it gives you pages where you can write down the symptoms that your pup has hmm. and a bookmark where you list anything that ever happens once on the timeline, you list it every time it happens and in the journal. And then there's the early warning signs of internal imbalance. So hmm. our goal is to have a puppy that has clear eyes, that has that beautiful puppy smell and as they get older, they don't develop a doggy smell. Mm -hmm. They don't need baths. Dogs do not need bathing. Well, puppies do, don't they, when they roll and stuff and, Absolutely. and knock over things and get covered with egg yolk and <laughs> mm -hmm. yep, <laughs> all, the, totally. all the fun things puppies do. Yeah. Um, and so bathing is fine, but you shouldn't have to bathe to keep the doggy odor away. That's mm. the key. Hmm. Um, puppy problems. You may go to a vet when your puppy's, say, six months old, and uh, one of the incisors or one of the canines is still there, hasn't fallen out. And they go, mm -hmm. we'll have to do surgery and pull that out. Well, maybe not. Do some research. Stop right. and think about it. Is this Be something your pet's that advocate. Right. with holistic support, we usually, those fall out with homeopathy, mm -hmm. Chinese medicine, mm -hmm. other approaches. Yes. And then the other key thing is learn how to heal your animal yourself. Hmm. So I'm curious, Brad, do you have dogs, cats? I do. Yeah, I've got two dogs. Okay. And do you do any sort of energy healing, Reiki, anything like that? Uh, nothing specific. You know, we had um, Dr. Edward, the healing vet on a couple months ago. Um, and so I've, I've been playing have you around. Taken his, have you taken his web course? I haven't taken the full web course yet, no, okay. but I would so, love to get on there. W-E-B-B, Whole Energy Body Balance. Mm -hmm. There are, um, if you go to my website, you'll see a list um, at Holistic Actions. We have speakers every week on these for members, and we've probably covered a dozen so far. Mm -hmm. Eden Energy Medicine, um, Scalar Waves, Reiki, um, mm -hmm. Healing Touch for Animals, Tellington Tea Touch, etc. So there are multiple things you can learn. Pick one, mm -hmm. read a bunch of them, pick one and learn it now when you have a puppy and then you start using it and you will prevent so many problems. Mm -hmm. For instance, if you've learned Reiki or some of the other energy approaches, it has mm -hmm. the, most of them have the ability to, some people say, take the bad out of. But it's not so much taking the bad out as it is readjusting the energy field to match your animal. 
but it's so it won't harm. When you're doing, if you're doing initial vaccines, which you don't have to do, there is natural mm -hmm. immunity, nozodes, other approaches. Yeah. But if you're worried about the damage from them, number one, make sure your puppy's healthy when he goes in. Don't get a vaccine when the puppy's coughing or sneezing or having right. diarrhea. Yes. Wait until they're healthy. If you've learned Reiki, you can actually hold the syringe in your hand before it's given. And if you're mm -hmm. working with a conventional vet who uh, wouldn't think about, wouldn't be happy with that, you can say, you know, I've heard about bad things in puppies with vaccines. I would like to pray over this syringe. Hmm. And Reiki energy, other energy is simply another form of prayer. So sure. you're just neutralizing it. And then when you get back to the car, you Reiki the injection site. And you use the journal to pay attention to any changes that happen. And if changes happen, then you contact your holistic vet. So that's another way that um, these energy healings can be helping you from day one with your puppy. Mm -hmm. Wow. And so it definitely seems like it's worth investing in. And it's something that um, I, I know from talking to other experts, it's something that will benefit your pet throughout their entire life and something that you can carry with you a skill that you'll know for the rest of yours. So I, do, I think it's definitely worthwhile to dive into. And going back to my mission, any one of these energy healings that I, that I'm mentioning, they mm -hmm. aren't just, they, they don't like go straight to your pet. They go to you, they mm -hmm. go to the plants, they go to the earth. So they're helping the whole planet at the same time, especially if when you start a session, you are do, okay, I'm going to do Eden Energy Medicine for the whole family. I'm focusing on this animal and I want it particularly to thank Mother Earth for all mm -hmm. that she's done as well. So you just include it all yeah. in it. So, and it'll save you a lot of money. Right. True. Because imagine, here's the thing. Your dog starts limping. Your puppy, your puppy is playing. I mean, gosh, puppies play and turn and jump and fall and all sorts of stuff happens with them. Right. And your puppy's now holding his foot up and limping. Mm -hmm. Well, if you're a Holistic Actions member, you could post on the forum. And mm -hmm. what we would say is, or if you called me or called your Holistic Vet that you already have on board, we would say, well, can they put any weight on it? When you press it, is he shrieking with pain? Mm -hmm. No, not at all. And so... It's five o'clock at night. You're going to go, okay, we're going to wait for the night. I'm not going to throw the Frisbee today. And you do your energy healing. By the morning, no problem. Even mm. without energy healing, probably it's going to be fine or at least right. better enough that you don't have to rush to the vet. Mm. So use your common sense. Think, if this was a child, would I rush to the emergency room? Yes. If this was a child, would I immediately give a drug? Right. Or would I, I wait think that's a fantastic way to think about it. Yes, absolutely. And it doesn't matter whether it's diarrhea, et cetera. Now, say your mm -hmm. puppy gets into some stuff and develops diarrhea. Well, you pull out your book, a couple of your books that you have on holistic health for animals, and there's so many good ones out there. Mm -hmm. Or you go to your Holistic Actions um, member website forum and you post and you find, well, we could give marshmallow root, which is a very gentle herb for diarrhea. We mm. could just simply fast for 18 hours, depending on the size of the animal, maybe six or seven animal hours for a small dog or cat or and a puppy. Um, and with an adult, bigger dog, you certainly could go 24, even 48 hours. Right. Uh, so maybe just fasting is all we need to do. If it's a little mm -hmm. worse, maybe you want to do slippery elm, maybe one of the flower essences, maybe the energy healing you've learned. So it, there's so many approaches, and many of them are things you have right in your house. Rice right. that is really overcooked. Mm -hmm. in, in the old days, they would make rice water to treat cholera in people, mm -hmm. severe mm -hmm. diarrhea. And so basically, you're making a super slurry, cook the rice for an hour in tons of water and you got and feed the water and the rice. Mm -hmm. And that might be the next step. And it seems to really soothe the intestines. I don't recommend rice generally, but for right. treating diarrhea, it seems to be, and you could use chicken broth mm -hmm. um, if you want to make it more palatable. So these right. are things that make sure. So, no, so now you've learned a couple of things, learn an energy thing right away. Yes. Get some books right away. Mm -hmm. have, look at my, I mean, of course I was a practitioner, so I have a lot of books, but still 
have have a have a have a number of books that you can refer to, mm -hmm. and um, and then the one we haven't talked about yet is have a holistic vet on call. Yes. So let's talk about building your healthcare team for your puppy. What does that mean? Because I think a lot of folks they they Google uh, you know nearby vets, they find one that has a great rating near them, and that's the healthcare team right there. But what else should we be thinking about? Well. If you need a local conventional vet because you can't find a holistic one nearby, mm -hmm. then it's fine to have a conventional vet. However, if you can find a holistic one close enough and you find out they're good and you like working with them and you can get into a working relationship with them, then that would be better. And then mm -hmm. you can use an emergency room for backup. Emergency rooms very rarely will ask if your animal's current on vaccines. Maybe rabies, which I recommend you stay current on unless your animal is very ill with immune problems or cancer. Mm -hmm. um, and so an ER is a good place you can go. And they're not going to talk to you so much about what kind of food you're feeding. You're not going to get yelled at because you're feeding Steve's raw food. Right. You know, um, they're not they're not going to yell at you for that. And right. so they're it's sort here of to good, help your pet right now. Right. And whatever needs to be done. And you still have to stop and think, is this what I want to do? Right. Do I need all of those tests? Maybe we'll start with one. So you're still your pet's advocate there. Mm -hmm. So an ER is one of the people on your, is one of the, is on your healthcare team. Okay. Another is a holistic veterinarian, either locally or remotely. There mm -hmm. are a number of particularly homeopathic veterinarians, but even other veterinarians like Dr. Ed, the healing vet who's in Australia, but he works yep. virtually. So mm -hmm. there are many around the world who do work virtually. There's an article on my website, which is my name right there, christinachambro.com. Or if you're listening to this and not looking at it, um, myhealthyanimals.com will get you there as well. Mm -hmm. Easier than trying to spell Chambro if you're that not looking at it right now. <laughs> um, and I have a whole article on selecting and working with a holistic veterinarian. Mm -hmm. Well, I've tried. I've gone to, I Googled and I, and I didn't find any holistic vets in my area. Right. Mm. Or I went to, I went to the AHVMA website, the American Holistic Veterinary Medical Association website, and mm -hmm. there's nobody near me. Right. Mm. I'm frustrated. Well, here's the thing. It will be frustrating. All right. You got to know that ahead of time. So right. in my article, I talk about why it's frustrating and the, the bottom line is if a, home, if a veterinarian is trained in homeopathy, Chinese medicine, chiropractic and essential oils, they can't afford to belong to all of those organizations at two to $400 a year. So they may only belong to one organization and yet they do all of those modalities and they may not belong to the American Holistic Veterinary Medical. We wish they all did, but it just right. doesn't work that way. So the yeah. onus is on you, the puppy owner to start now to find these. So you have to go to, I have all the websites for all the organizations that train and certify veterinarians there. So wow. you go to those web, go to each website. Oh, by the way, these websites are not very well taken care of. <laughs> you will Even find better. links that don't work, mm -hmm. phone numbers mm -hmm. that don't work, veterinarians that have never been there at that number veterinarians mm -hmm. who've left veterinarians said, oh yeah he took a two-day course but he doesn't do that anymore that's okay i told you persistence and you got to just yep. dig in and do it so you go to all the all those links and then mm -hmm. you have a list of maybe 10 that you start calling and then that narrows down to maybe four that are actually have a clinic and at that right. point i give you a couple of paragraphs on how to evaluate the veterinarian by looking mm -hmm. at their website by talking to their receptionist, office manager, and technician, particularly if they have a technician working with the holistic vet. Hmm. And sometimes you'll find a website that looks totally conventional, but the name, when you look at the bios, the name you found on the acupuncture website actually is doing a lot of holistic. It's just right. not, doesn't show up on the website. 
Right. It's a holistic vet doing holistic practice in a conventional, conventional vet practice. Right. Absolutely. So there are all these different permutations and combinations. And yeah. so my article really holds your hand and gets you there. And the mm. other thing for everything we're talking about here today is um, I stopped being the virtual homeopathic veterinarian when I turned 65. And I now do pet health coaching because what I want to do is help you get on the right path with your puppy. Mm. I want to help you create this holistic healthcare team. So if you've done all the work that I talked about on the article and you still haven't found anybody, even a virtual one, which you could have found, but maybe you tried some of them and you weren't happy with them. And right. you thought, oh, they're not the right people for me. Maybe you have a misunderstanding of what's going on that I could help clear up for you. Mm -hmm. So you can contact me at my website or holistic act, um, uh, healthy animals at AOL.com. And I will do an appointment with you. So that's what I'm doing now is helping you know what you can do for whatever your situation is. So mm -hmm. if you've got a puppy, I love these calls. I've had people call me and say, we are going to be getting a puppy. What should we know to start? Wow. How should we begin? Right. We and want to get off on the right foot from the beginning. Absolutely. That is mm -hmm. so important. So that's why I'm there as your backup. And mm -hmm. 10 years down the line, all of a sudden you're finding problems or you've got a new puppy and that vet you've been working with is retiring and you haven't found another one or you're dealing with a particular issue. Same thing. I'll do a coaching call and help you move to the next level. Or mm -hmm. you say, you know, I want to change and play around with foods and I'm scared to do it. You know, can I hire you for three months that I can call you and ask questions, have questions all the concerns. time? Sure. sure, we'll do that. Uh, <laughs> so I'm, I'm just here to help you get that puppy on the right track. Yeah, help, you're helping people learn to be a good advocate as well. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. And then you have a job with your holistic veterinarian. Mm-hmm. You have to be a good advocate with them. You may want a raw food diet, a fresh food diet, and they're not. They may want you on a holistic, maybe a Chinese medicine can diet. Right. And you can have a conversation with them and they say, well, your puppy is very strongly, I'm not trained in acupuncture, so I'm not super accurate on this, but your puppy is really exhibiting a lot of fire symptoms and that could cause these problems down the line. So I'd like you to start with feeding this food that is designed to quell the fire. Mm -hmm. And you could say, okay, or you could say, is there a way I could do that with fresh food? Right. And you can decide which way you want to go. And then you evaluate, are we moving in the right direction? Mm -hmm. Which one, you, you pick one and right. then you go, are we getting better overall? Or did just one symptom go away? Did mm -hmm. one symptom go away and yet they're sicker overall? He was so active and playful and, and learning well. And then we gave him his heartworm pill or his flea medication or a vaccine. And he, he does, he's so stubborn now. He's not even learning anymore. Right. So in, in the journal, you would make that note and you would have noticed, oh, we just did X, Y, Z. Mm -hmm. So that's suppression. That's where one symptom goes away and they get worse overall. And then you back off. You figure out what it was last. You stop mm -hmm. that and hopefully call your holistic vet or look in your books or, right. you know. <laughs> Absolutely. And I think evaluating them comes back to a term that I see you guys use a lot, which is BEAM, right? What is BEAM? Why is it so important? There are actually two parts to evaluating that are key. Okay. And uh, beam is behavior, energy, appetite, and mood. And when I wrote my book, and so Dr. Jeff Feynman, who runs Holistic Action, created Holistic Actions, created that acronym. He loves acronyms. Yeah. When I created my book, I started with overall energy and alertness, emotional mm -hmm. state, social interactions, and appetite as needing to be evaluated every single time you evaluated the response to what you were doing. So 20 years ago, I was saying the same thing that Jeff is saying now. Yeah. So it, think about it. If you had 
just really horrible, itchy skin. And yet you were passionate about what you were doing in life. And you were having so much fun training these puppies to do things. And, you know, you would just scratch and go ahead and have fun. And that's yeah. the same thing with the animals. If they <clears throat> develop any symptom, not a severe life-threatening one, but most symptoms, and they start feeling better as soon as you start your lifestyle change or your treatment, they're feeling better. They're more energetic. Their appetites normalized, might have been too high or too low. Mm -hmm. um, their mood and their behavior is improving then you know that whatever you're doing is moving in the right direction. Even if the current itch, diarrhea, vomiting, runny eye, sneezing seems to be a little worse, hmm. but if they're feeling better, hang in there a day or two more or yeah. call your holistic vet and say, I'm scared. I'm not sure we're doing the right thing yet. <laughs> here are the positives and, and here's the negative. Absolutely. Let's weigh this together. Yeah. And then they'll say, let's wait. <clears throat> Yes. Wait and see. You're fine. It's not critical. You, you right. can hang in there. So evaluating the beam is helps you decide, do I need to rush to the veterinary clinic or not? Or mm. is this something the dog is limping, puts a little weight on it, isn't screaming with pain, and the puppy is acting like a puppy and just playing right. and having a blast? Then you don't have to rush. But, right. you know, the puppy is has turned blue or white. Um, isn't the energy levels down, you need to go right into the vet. You know, maybe mm -hmm. not the emergency room, maybe depending on the level, that's right. still your call. Always feel comfortable with your decision. If you're like, but I want to be holistic, and but I'm scared, I, I go to the vet, get it checked out. You may not do what they say to do, but you, mm -hmm. need, to, you need that support. Right. Be, you know, take care of yourself as well. This is all about taking care of you because then your animal is going to be happier. Right. Absolutely. The less stress you have inside, the less stress you'll bring into your house. You'll share with your uh, pets and your family. And, uh, I mean, and then the puppies are giving you less stress. Right. So it goes, back, it goes Beautiful back and feedback forth. Loop. Yep. Yes. Okay. And they so, may or may not be giving your plants less stress. <laughs> <laughs> So you have behavior, energy, appetite, and mood. Mm -hmm. Those are the things you want to evaluate yep. during changes like that. Okay. It's just quality of life. Yes. It's overall, how are they feeling is the bottom line. And then mm. you go to the early warning signs of illness that are that I was talking about that are on the back of the bookmark, which are, and also they're on my website, on the Holistic Action website. And it's things that we accept as common that aren't. Healthy animals don't have them. So mm -hmm. healthy dogs don't need a bath all the time. Healthy puppies shouldn't be having diarrhea all the time. Healthy puppies mm -hmm. shouldn't be straining to poop. Healthy puppies should be learning pretty readily. Now, everybody's different. Mm -hmm. They're going to be, sure. you know, slow learners and quick learners. But, yeah. but within that spread, mm -hmm. they should be they should be acting, you know, and learning and training and all of that. So and that, that's and great. That's I think indeed. setting some expectations, some realistic expectations. This is normal stuff to watch for, or these are kind of a normal expectations of a puppy. And if you see anything outside of this, maybe question a little bit, look into it a little more. And so that's important in terms of back to finding a trainer. Yeah. Okay. If you have a trainer who says you have to do it my way, there's no other way. Hightail it out of there. If you have a trainer who says, okay, every dog line up and do X, Y, Z. And when one dog isn't doing it, they say, okay, put a choke collar on it or punish him. Or, you know, if that doesn't feel right to you, right? hightail it out of there. It's, there are it's a lot of training styles out there. And it definitely takes, um, it's a great idea to research a few of the available kind of training methods before you even jump in to see, make sure you don't end up in a class where they're using um, uh, methods like you techniques. just talked about. Yeah. That just do not align with your own beliefs. And go watch the classes. You don't have to even yeah. sign up for a class. Just go watch mm -hmm. the classes, go to a dog show. Really important. Actually, whatever breeds are in your dog, whether mm -hmm. they're purebred or mixed or whatever, 
but sort of, you know, you have a sense of who they are. Go yeah. to some dog shows and watch those breeds. Talk to those breeders. Now, most of them are not going to be holistic. Um, but some of them may be feeding fresh food diet, though, mm -hmm. and doing chiropractic and other things to help. But they may not be thinking from the whole the way we're talking about here. However, right. you'll learn what's normal for the breed. Mm -hmm. You'll learn how just tips of the tips of the trade. Oh, mm -hmm. by, by the way, speaking of breeds, don't start pulling the hair from your poodle puppy's ear. Hair pulling from ears is not good. Right. Very bad. Very bad. It's like hair pulling all the time that some women do shouldn't be done, I don't think. But it, mm -hmm. we have a choice. They don't. Um, it right. can really cause harm. Um, so there are things that you may pick up at the show, like keeping the, hairs, the ears plucked, that you don't want to do. Maybe at the right. show... It's a Great Dane that has the erect ears that have been cropped, and you've decided that you don't want to crop your Great Dane's ear, and that's great. Mm -hmm. But still, you know, it's just one other resource for you. These are all resources for you. And mm -hmm. one of the resources in your town are holistic people practitioners. Mm -hmm. Because if there's somebody who's doing Reiki <clears throat> um, or other energy methods, Bowen therapy, for instance, where I live, there's a group doing Bowen. Um, mm -hmm. You can, they will often work on your animals. Might be under the table, might, right. you know, and might not be whatever, but, you know, you might have to pay them in cash. Um, <laughs> but they, they may help you. And it depends on the state you live in. Some states are just horrible about mm -hmm. letting anybody do things and others are, <laughs> are more lenient. But it's, that's right. another person to have on your healthcare team. Okay. So it's all of these pieces that are important to have on your healthcare team. And, and again, okay, there's no one right answer. There right. are puppies out there who have been trained in a forceful manner that are eating kibble, that are being vaccinated mm -hmm. at four weeks, six weeks, eight weeks, right. 12 That's weeks, 16 yep. weeks. And then once or twice a year after that for the rest of their life. And mm -hmm. they do fine. They live a long, healthy life. But that is at one end. Yeah. More and more, when I graduated from vet school in 1980, we defined atopy as a skin condition, an itchy skin condition that developed when they were at least a year old. Now mm -hmm. it's defined. It can happen at six-week-old puppies. Um, Cushing's disease, diabetes, they were rare, even in the veterinary school. And now conventional clinics are seeing them over and over again in their practice. Uh, and so the causes of that is everything we've talked about here. So it's feeding a food that's not nourishing for that individual. It's overloading on toxins. By the way, one of the early warning signs of illness is getting fleas. Healthy dogs and cats don't get fleas. So right. please don't start your puppy on flea treatments. And there are a ton of good flea treatments out there. Um, as a member of Holistic Actions, you get my journal for free. You get the Kindle book, Fleas Be Gone, for free. Um, or you can go to um, Amazon, Amazon, yeah, and get um, uh, Fleas Be Gone, a 50-page book on natural approaches to fleas. But there are tons of easy ways. And if you see one flea, don't panic. Right. And if your puppy's itching a lot, say he's scratching his ear or he's scratching other places on his body, don't automatically assume there's an ear infection or that there is fleas. Mm -hmm. Learn how to look for them and find them. And then yep. that's going to save you weeks of bathing and vacuuming the house and doing all these different things. <laughs> they weren't, it was just one flea that hopped a ride one day. Right. Yeah, absolutely. And that's another another way to remind people just to slow down, stop and really evaluate what's going on. Yes, take a yeah. breath and don't panic. Right. And I would also recommend learning about flower essences. There are, I think, about five companies that are making combination flower essences for animals. Many of them have lines of individual essences as well. Not all of them do. Um, 
And Rescue Remedy is now available. It's a Bach flower essence, and it's available in almost every town. Mm -hmm. uh, or you can go online. And there are specific combinations for puppies that are having training problems, of mm -hmm. puppies that are having trouble adjusting to a home, of mm -hmm. puppies that are having GI issues or stomach issues or skin issues. Flower essences are 100% safe. And you can use them, you want to use them a lot when you're trying them. So a little in the mouth, a little on the feet, put it on your hands. And when you're petting them, pet them with it, um, mm -hmm. put a drop in their food, put a drop on their um, bedding, things like mm -hmm. that. Um, mm -hmm. So jump to flower essences. They're super safe. And um, energy first, energy is even deeper healing, but energy and flower essences right together. Those two will stand you in great stead along with take a breath mm -hmm. and don't panic. But if you are, for instance, okay, this is a problem I need to go to the vet, you're nervous. Hopefully yeah. you'll take a second person with you, just like we recommend for going to the doctor when there's a big, a critical problem. Right. And give some rescue remedy on the way. Everybody takes some rescue remedy. You can dilute. Calm down. Yeah. Um, stress stopper is through Jackson Galaxy. And mm -hmm. it's a boosted up rescue remedy, according to the person who makes it, Dr. Jean Hovey. And mm -hmm. so that's another that, you know, you might have stress stopper on hand and you put them, you can dilute them in bottles. So mm -hmm. four drops of rescue remedy and you don't have to get the pet rescue remedy. If you do, it's okay. It just doesn't have any alcohol in it. Or you get the people rescue remedy, four drops of that and an ounce of water. Mm -hmm. And you keep that, have a bottle upstairs, downstairs in your purse whatever. <laughs> right. Anytime there's a problem, you take it, the, the puppy takes it, and you all take a deep breath. <laughs> right. Slow down a little bit and evaluate. Yeah. Right. Right. Um, do you have any good resources for folks for um, researching flower essences? Is there just one great place that you know of where people can go if they're not familiar at all and get a good base introduction to them, start learning how to use them? Well, each of the companies really gives you a good introduction. My website, I have a lot of free articles on my website, not as many as Dr. Jean Hovey does. Now, mm -hmm. even though her website, okay, we're talking about puppies, her website is littlebigcat.com, um, but she's the one who created one line of flower essences. So she talks a ton about flower essences. She did the stress stopper. So my website, has an article on flower essences, hers does, and holistic actions um, in our free 101 basic course, which, oh my gosh, I didn't talk about that. My goodness. For your, the first step you should take before you learn an um, energy, before you buy flower essences, the first step you take is for free, go to, and we'll have links for you for this as well, go mm -hmm. to the holisticactions.com fundamentals course, 101 pet health, holistic pet health. And you're going to have five lessons. You're going to have a lesson about um, why symptoms are clues to what's going on. And, and this explanation I talked about nutrition, toxins, creating your healthcare team, all the things we've talked about here and some on flower essences. <clears throat> if you're a member of holistic actions. We have um, a huge area for flower essences. But briefly, we have jacksongalaxy.com, Bach flower, and there's some books on Bach flowers for pets because mm -hmm. they aren't combined to treat animals. You have to make your own combinations. Um, and then greenhopeessences.com is in New Hampshire and pet essences is another. And then there are other ones out there. And each one of those does talk gives you specifics on flower essences. Awesome. Very cool. But first check out the course that you offered for free. That yeah, but that's like that you do that to... first and then flower essence right. is one of your things to check out along yes, the line. To research later. And yeah, become a member later. of Holistic Actions because you're gonna <clears throat> you will get the best support you can for your puppy. Mm -hmm. Um another thing I mentioned in passing but I didn't want to forget is Tellington Tea Touch has videos out the wazoo, books, multiple books. It has um, classes and courses that you can take virtually and locally around the world. 
And mm -hmm. by the way, all those uh, veterinary, <laughs> selecting a veterinarian, I have around the world things as well. Not for every place, but something to help you around the world. Tellington Tea Touch is not just about making small circles to make them feel better or to help with problems. They have an entire puppy section of training your puppy. And mm -hmm. it's training them beautifully. This is based on um, some on an Israeli human healing approach called Feldenkrais. And she's adapted it for horses and dogs and cats. For instance, if you had a puppy that was having trouble going up and down steps, and you'd say, just doesn't seem to know where his feet are, you would take a scrunchie and put a scrunchie around his wrist. And mm. bingo, all of a sudden he knows where his feet are and he can do the steps. And after a while he's learned to do that and then he's doing, doing fine. Mm -hmm. And they talk about some different things that also you would find in rehab videos or um, physical training videos where it's good mm. to walk your dog, your puppy on a hillside. <clears throat> so <clears throat> one side is higher than the other and you turn around and go back the other way. Or if you're on a beach, you know, yep. when you walk on a beach, one you go one way and the other to go yep. up a hill, down a hill, up the steps. So they're talking about all these different things. They talk about Cavaletti and things like that. And they've been around 50, 60 years. Amazing. So mm. that, that's another, that, that really is another key, key for your puppy. Awesome. And can you give us that the name of that one more time? Right. Um, Tellington and then the letter T hyphen touch. Great. Tellington. And again, T tons of videos online. So YouTube and all that sort of stuff. Right. I, I don't think you can go wrong with anything, anything they talk about. Mm -hmm. So with the holistic approach, there it, this is a caution. Yes. Homeopathic medicines can be given for conditions. Chinese herbs can be given for specific conditions. But you're missing the holistic, W-H-O-L. So you want to be paying attention to how your puppy is doing overall in all these areas we've talked about. Mm -hmm. And then you try to be treating the whole puppy. And if you're going to a holistic vet, you want them treating the whole puppy. You don't want them just saying, oh, he's limping, let's give this. Right. He's limping, what's been going on in his life? Oh, it was Thanksgiving and he played Frisbee for five, for five hours. Let's just let him rest for three days, you know? Right. So you need to be doing it as well as them. Now, it's okay also to use holistic approaches for just one symptom. Mm -hmm. I just want you to know what you're doing. It's the Band-Aid approach. It's like a right. drug in a way. Just it's a little more healthy than most of the drugs. Sure. So that overall, if you're looking at BEAM, early warning signs, tracking the symptoms in whatever form you decide to track the symptoms, then you're looking at, the, at your whole animal and your puppy should be growing and glowing and any problems that occur there are so many different options. And that's another good news, bad news. <clears throat> good news, you will never run out of things to try. Your puppy develops panosteitis, a, a growing puppy disease of the bone, mm. infulness of the bone. And you try one thing and it doesn't work. Well, there's 40 other things you can try. That's right. the good news. The bad news is there are 40 things you can try. Which one are you going to try? <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah, absolutely. Take that rescue remedy, slow down, and then evaluate. <laughs> That's right. And pick one. There's no yeah. one right answer. There's no yeah. one right expert. There's no one right food. They're just better. They're ones that make more sense to you. Mm -hmm. And that's really key. And that's the other thing I do with my pet health coaching practice. Some people mm -hmm. have a vet they love, but the vet is very good with animals, very good holistically, healing, helping their animal be healthy, but isn't good at explaining anything and can't talk to the person very well at all because that's sure. why they went to vet school. Right. They liked yeah. animals, not people. And so <laughs> I can sometimes be the bridge to help mm -hmm. you figure out what's going on. <laughs> <laughs> what on earth is my vet trying to tell me? <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. And, oh my gosh, you said the perfect thing, Brad. What is my dog trying to tell me? Mm -hmm, what is sure. my puppy trying to tell me? 
-hmm. take an animal communication course. That's right up there. Get a holistic vet. All these things we've talked about, put animal <laughs> communication right up at the top. And there's a huge number of good ones. Um, yeah. I have, you know, I have a, some on my website. You can email me if you want others, but I can be done virtually. And mm -hmm. some get you, get this puppy and others, it's like there's a block and they're not getting that puppy. When you're working with them, don't tell them stuff ahead of time. But take right. a class. You mm -hmm. would be amazed at what you'll hear from your dogs. Hmm. And, and the other thing is, even, even if you haven't taken a class in animal communication, allow your puppy choices and then listen and see which choice they want. So you're going outside, you're getting ready to go outside. You could say, puppy, do you want to go out the front door or the back door? If they look like, huh, you take them where you want them to go. But if right. they rush to one of the doors, then the other Pay attention to that and do it. If mm -hmm. you're walking out your house and you have a choice of direction to take the walk, ask the puppy dog and dog as they get older. As a puppy, they may not be as clear or they right. might be. And, um, and go with the direction they say. Honor their choices when you mm -hmm. ask. Do you want this food today or this food today? Mm -hmm. So pay attention, listen to them. Oh, I'm glad we concluded that. <laughs> <laughs> right, absolutely. That was really important. <laughs> <laughs> so we covered a lot today. Is there anything else that you want to hit on before we talk about um, where people can learn more from you? Just have so much fun with those puppies. Puppies are right. just, oh, while I'm talking, I'm just smelling puppy. <laughs> you know, you have right. that unique smell. Puppies mm -hmm. just... So every day, and this is true for life in general, this is my 73-year-old talking to you. Mm -hmm. Every day, in every way, appreciate every moment. Be thankful and grateful for every moment. He just knocked over the da-da-da. Isn't it, isn't it wonderful that he has the strength to do that? Right. <laughs> He's getting so big and energetic. It's beautiful. Yes. <laughs> so really focus on the moment. Love the moment, even if it doesn't seem good. But just have fun with your puppies. Never give up. And really, really, really look for these holistic options that are out there that we have just barely touched on. There are a lot of summits that are out there. There are a lot of different websites. There are different other organizations, you know, different groups have courses and classes you can take. Um, mm -hmm. there's, there's one that's on my list of finding a veterinarian, which you'll be going to under finding a veterinarian in general is the civtedu.com, um, which is, I always forget college of integrated veterinary medicine therapies, therapies, and it has classes for you, the puppy mm -hmm. owner. It has, so it's cool. not just for vets. They have the vet side and they have the, the non-vet side. Yeah. And so you can learn a lot about these different approaches there too. That is, and there's so much information these days. There's so much, so many of these courses available that people can uh, can learn from. It's kind of the golden age of raising puppies, I think, <sighs> raising dogs in general. Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> so, Doctor Shembro, as long as you are in charge. Yes. And you're being your puppy's advocate. It's the golden age. When you're going absolutely. to a conventional vet and doing just what they say, it is not the golden age. That's absolutely true. Yes. You don't have to go with the flow, know your beliefs and stick with them. At least have conversations about this stuff. Don't just feel bullied into nodding and saying, okay, okay, okay. That's what has to happen. Mm -hmm. You can always say, give me 24 hours to think about this. Yep. Let me make a few phone calls and do some thinking and... Um, you know, you can anything. say, and you can ask your conventional vet, you can say, how long could I have to make my decision? Right. For instance, orthopedic surgeons have told me <clears throat> that they're fine. If a dog has a cruciate ligament problem of waiting three months to do the surgery, as long as they're on a supplement, a glucosamine supplement. Wow. So sometimes, you know, if, just by asking, not ready to make a decision now. How long do I have? Right. So it's a yeah. great question to ask. Yeah. Buy yourself <laughs> some time to stop and think. Yeah. 
So Dr. Shambro, you shared so much with us, but I know you have so much more to share. Where can people learn more from you? All the things I've talked about the whole time. So my yeah. website, christinashambro.com, my email, healthyanimals at aol.com. I strongly suggest you become a member of Holistic Actions. Um, and if you are listening to this and become a member of Holistic Actions, even if it's just for a month, call me, uh, email me when you become a member and I will give you a surprise. That's cool. I love a good, surprise. A good, a good surprise. Right. <laughs> so, <laughs> I'll give you a surprise. <laughs> <laughs> and then all the others, you know, we've made several other, hopefully yep, absolutely. we'll have a Fantastic. list of them. <laughs> yep, absolutely. We'll list out some links for you guys when this goes live. Great. All right. Well, I want to thank all of you so much for joining us today. This has been a great conversation. I really hope that you learned some great info to help uh, improve your pets' lives at home. Um, remember to join us at the end of the month. We're doing our two webinars uh, in raw food safety. We'll discuss all of the common concerns about feeding a raw food. And then you actually get to follow some of our ingredients from farm to bowl to see how it all comes together. So that's one of my What's favorites. Fun? Oh, oh that's great. I, I always love how these things are made, you know, following things from start to finish. Yes. And so uh, that's one of my favorite webinars. Oh, and then to end the month out, we're going to be presenting our webinar, Puppies, Building a Strong Foundation. Um, so you can register for that on the Steve's Facebook page. And I'll also toss the links in the comments here. And then, of course, don't forget to check out our free nutrition course at learnaboutraw.com. Um, we had some really fantastic minds join us for creating this. Um, and you guys will really dig it if you haven't checked it out already. It's and then a great. huge, a huge thank you to you, Dr. Shambro. Thank you so much for joining us and sharing all of this wisdom with us. Um, I really hope we get to talk again soon. Oh, I'm sure we will. And I wouldn't be able to do this if each one of you isn't, wasn't here asking for it and looking for ways that you can help your puppy, yourself, and the whole planet. That's absolutely true. Well, thank you all so much. You have a fantastic day. Go play with your cat. Go give your dog a belly rub, and we will see you next time.